In this lesson, I would like to quickly demonstrate the concept of active and reactive power. The active power basically is exchange between a source, an electric source, and a resistance, whereas reactive power is exchange between electric source and a capacitor or an electric source and an inductor. The basic difference between uh, active and reactive power is that the active power leaves the electric network and is transformed. In the case of an ohmic uh, load, it is transformed into heat, for example, but there, also, there are also other active loads, such as, for example, motors, where there is a, there is a torque, or light, where there is light, the transformation of electric energy into light. Whereas the reactive power stays within the electric grid and the, there is no transformation, the electricity is basically oscillating between the source and, in this case, a capacitor or between the source and uh, inductance. In case of a capacitor, uh, the reactive uh, power is storing energy in the electric field of a capacitor, whereas in the case of an inductor, the electric energy is stored as a magnetic field in a coil, for example. Here I have my simulator with the three types of loads, the resistive loads, the inductive loads and the capacitor. I have a sinus sinusoidal voltage source and I have a very small resistance just to measure the current which is then flowing into, uh, into the loads. I have also a switch in seri series to the load so that I can switch on and off the individual loads during the simulation. So let's go and simulate it. What you see here now I have switched on just the resistive load. You see that the voltage and the current are in phase so they are basically sitting on each other. The load, which is the red current, is oscillating with double the frequency, with double the network frequency. So in this case, it would be 100 Hertz. It is oscillating, but is staying on the positive side. So that means there is always power flowing from the source to the load. And at the load, it is transformed, uh, for example, in, in heat or in whatever else. It is leaving the circuit. I have now switched from the resistive load to the inductive load. What you immediately see is that the power is oscillating between plus and minus. So the power is really oscillating between the load and the source at double the net network frequency. The network frequency in this case is 50 Hertz. So the power is oscillating at 100 Hertz. What you also immediately see is that there is a 90 degrees phase shift between the voltage, which is the blue curve, and the current, which is the, the green curve. So this phase shift is now new, and there was no phase shift in the case of the resistive load, as you can see here. So remember, power was always on the positive side. In this case, the power is oscillating. And if I go even further and look at the capacitive load, it's exactly the same picture. However, there it is uh, the voltage curve which is uh, lagging the current curve. So the maximum voltage point, negative voltage point is reached uh, 90 degrees after the current had its maximum. So this is the, the, the voltage is lagging in case of a resistance, uh, case of a capacitor. So we said that in case of uh, AC, the power is oscillating back and forth. Let's now look at what happens in case of DC. When we have a nomic resistance, the active power is still flowing from the source uh, to the resistor and there it is dissipated, for example, in terms of in form of heat. And we see that there is always power. You see the blue curve is for the voltage, the green curve is for the current, and the red curve is uh, the power, which is the current times the voltage. In case of DC uh, for a capacitor, the situation is totally different. What we see is that uh, when we switch on the source, 
the the current is flowing through the capacitor until the voltage at the capacitor has reached the source voltage and uh, during the charging time there is power flowing from the source to the capacitor this is what you can see in the red curve but then the power flow is zero so if there is no voltage oscillation uh, from an AC the power between the source and the capacitor does not oscillate anymore it is so the power flow is uh, zero in case of an inductance if we switch on an inductance to a DC voltage we see that in the first moment the voltage across the inductor is uh, on the level of the source voltage but then it decreases very quickly uh, we are pumping in energy into the magnetic field of the coil but once uh, and during this time the current through the coil is building up from zero to the maximum level but once it has reached the maximum the power flow goes down to zero the voltage across the coil is zero and there is a dc current flowing across the coil and therefore there is no power flow through the uh, to the coil uh, when when the coil is on a dc voltage therefore we can say that uh, reactive power uh, is uh, uh, exists only for ac applications and for DC applications, there is no reactive power. In DC, there is active power only. On the simulator, you can now learn what happens if you're mixing various loads. So for example, if we mix a resistive load, which is on now, and a reactor load. So you can see that there is a phase shift between these two uh, load curves. And the sum of both is the, the root of the square sum of the power, the reactive power in the reactive load and the active power through the resistor. So there is a different uh, variance and you can play around with the values of the individual uh, elements so that you can really understand how this whole thing works because we will need this understanding further down the road. If you want to test it, you go to the public simulator uh, at uh, the address indicated here. You put the simulation time of 40 milliseconds and run about 1000 steps. Then you get uh, a good result. <laughs>